Hi everyone, it's Iman and today I'm gonna walk you through a steady state vibration analysis in SAP 2000 using an uh, example from PAUSE Structural Dynamics book. We'll compare our results with the theoretical steady state calculation. So let's get to it. All right, so we have an example from PAUSE Structural Dynamics book with a harmonic lateral load at the beam level. F of T equals 200 sine of 5.3 T. This structure is actually modeled as a shear building. Um, that means the beam is rigid and the deformation comes only from the columns. Okay. Uh, the structure has a 5% damping and the total weight of the structure is 15 kips. And we need to determine the steady state amplitude of vibration. Okay. If I go to the second tab, the analytical solution gives us u equals 0 0.189 inches which is the steady state amplitude so let's see if uh, sap gives us the same result all right i've already drawn the frame and defined the material and section properties uh, and i'm going to show you real quick uh, the settings this is the e value and my units are pounds and inches okay and then for the columns and the rigid beam let me show you the properties this is for the column section properties okay so the moment of inertia for the columns is 69.2 inches to the fourth power and i've entered the big number for the cross-sectional area to avoid the axial deformation in this uh, example. And also make sure to set shear area in two direction as zero, because, you know, again, we have a shear building. Okay. And the, for the rigid beam, um, I've entered very big numbers for the cross-sectional area and moment of inertia about the uh, strong axis. And also shear area in two direction is zero. Now I'm going to assign uh, the nodal mass. I'm going to select this node, go to assign joint masses, uh, global direction in X direction. The total weight of the structure is 15 kips or 15,000 uh, pounds divided by gravity acceleration, which is 386. And this gives me 38.86. All right, now uh, let's define the lateral load pattern. Uh, define load pattern, and I've already defined uh, the F uh, and define it as the other type, okay? So I'm gonna select this joint, go to assign, joint load forces under F, and I'm gonna apply a unit um, load Okay. Now, uh, for steady state analysis, we first need to define a function. Define functions steady state. Here, uh, I'm gonna select user, add new function, and we will add a new function that defines the frequency response of our applied load. Okay. So the natural frequency of the load is 5.3 this section is uh, for the load properties so you can easily calculate uh, the f which is 5.3 over 2 pi okay this gives you this value i'm gonna copy this number all right at zero hertz the value is one and at uh, 0.8435 hertz, the value is also 1. So basically, this means our force maintains uh, a constant amplitude at this frequency. All right. And I'm going to rename it as steady state function uh, 5.3t, for example. Okay. 
All right. Now, let's set up the steady state load case. Define load cases. Add new load case. Steady state and steady state. Okay. And then load pattern F. And this is the function we just created. Okay. And the scale factor is 200. All right. And in the frequency uh, step data, I'm going to set both the first frequency and last frequency to uh, 0 0.84, uh, matching our excitation frequency. Okay. And for the number of increments, it doesn't matter because we only uh, analyze one frequency. So, for example, 20 or 1, doesn't matter. And for the damping, uh, I'm going to use Rayleigh damping, which uh, expresses the damping matrix as the combination of uh, mass and a stiffness proportional damping. Now, let's quickly go over Rayleigh damping. Uh, the damping matrix is basically given by uh, alpha m plus beta k, where alpha is mass proportional damping and beta is uh, stiffness proportional damping okay um, and to calculate alpha and beta we use the standard formulas right there uh, where psi is the damping ratio and omega 1 and omega 2 are two natural frequencies of the structure okay but um, in this example, we have a single degree of freedom, all right? So basically, we don't have uh, omega 2, it's 0, so alpha uh, is going to be 0, and uh, we only have beta, all right? Which is uh, stiffness proportional damping. All right, uh, alpha is 0, and beta is 2 psi, over uh, natural frequency. Uh, note that we have a loading frequency and uh, a natural frequency of the structure. Don't confuse them with each other. In this case, uh, we are using natural uh, frequency. Okay, so um, two times psi over 7.4 gives me this number, 0 0.0133. Five. All right, alpha, which is mass proportional uh, damping, is zero, and this zero point zero one three five. All right. Okay, and everything looks good, and okay. All right. So uh, before running the analysis, let's quickly check the uh, degrees of freedom uh, settings. We have a 2D frame in XZ uh, plane. So I'm going to select this one and hit OK. Now uh, we're ready to run the model and check the results. All right, done. I'm going to select this joint and go to display, show tables, and under joint output, I'm going to select joint displacements, and I only need the steady state results. Hit OK, and OK. All right. The SAP result is 0 0.191 inches, which is very close to the box solution which was zero, uh, let me show you. Yeah, it was 0 0.189 inches, okay? They're very close. And, and actually the small difference comes from rounding errors, uh, okay? Uh, in the book, uh, fewer decimal places were used uh, while uh, in my spreadsheet I've calculated everything with higher 
accuracy and when I used uh, more decimal places I got uh, 0 0.193 uh, three, uh, which is very very close to the SAP result so basically this confirms that the steady state analysis in SAP 2000 is uh, working correctly and you can use it for your dynamic uh, analysis all right that's it for today thanks for watching if you found this helpful uh, go ahead and like the video and smash that subscribe button thank you